I'm not going to lecture you. I just want to talk. Talk away. Do you know how much I worry about you? You have no need. I am on the brink of a wonderful opportunity. I'm not heading into a life of crime and degradation. And I know I won't be here, but just because I'm far away, it doesn't mean I love you any less. I know that. Then why can't you be happy for me? Because this isn't going to make you happy. I'll be living my dream. What could be better than that? It's funny. The girl I've known all these years has always dreamed of love and romance and having her own family. Ah, well, a fat load of use that's got me. A string of heartbreakers and losers. I adore Gerald, Mum. He's such an important person in my life. You know his heart was broken the first time he got married? I'm not Morgan. He knows that. And what if the real deal comes along? The one that you've been waiting for all this time? If he comes along, which I'm seriously beginning to doubt, I guess we'll deal with it then. So where does that leave Gerald? We're both adults. He knows it's a possibility. So you'll get a divorce, no longer married to an American citizen, and you're back to square one. Unless Mr. Wright is an American. <laughs> but what sort of a man would involve himself with a married woman? Surely not the sort that you would choose to fall in love with. I understand that I have to let you go. But don't give up on what's in your heart. You've always been true to yourself. That's one of the things that I love the most about you. Okay, Mr. Jennings, one more minute and you'll be able to unpack that extremely good-looking luggage of yours. This is room five, isn't it? Yes. Sorry, Mr. Jennings, looks like some sort of glitch. Be with us a minute. Back in attack. Well, according to my room allocation thingy, Mr. Jennings is booked in here for a private stay. Whereas mine says my lady's booked in for a private stay. This is somewhat troublesome. You're not kidding. Only two names on my list match to yours. And there are only eight beds allocated to private patients. Someone has seriously screwed up here. Scotty, I know this is your first day back and probably the last thing you want to deal with, uh, but there are problems with the private allocations. Double bookings all over the place. Oh, Rachel pushing things forward was always going to be messy. Well, you're not wrong. My patient booked a private room. According to this, he's out of luck. Congratulations on the engagement, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Can you park him in the patient lounge until I can sort something out? When do you think that will be? Whenever you're ready, we'll be fine. Ah, so, how long exactly have you been living here? Uh, about a month or so. After Kieran died, I couldn't stick around the IV. <laughs> believe he's gone. You've really been through the mill, haven't you? Well, no more than anyone else. I'm really looking forward to us setting up a home together again. I've missed belonging somewhere. Now, herbal or gumboot? Gumboot. Mum dragged me out for coffee just before. Oh. Did you patch things up? Not really. She's worried that I'm going to fall in love with someone and things will get complicated. Hmm. Always possible, I suppose. But things don't need to get complicated, do they? <laughs> Say, for example, one of us met someone we liked. Unlikely for me. Well, you never know. But say someone came along that I liked and wanted to date, then that needn't affect us. A absolutely not. <laughs> we are doing this to make the most out of our lives. And all of this, it won't bring up sad memories about wife number one. Are you kidding? If Morgan was here, she would have been cheering us on. She'd <laughs> probably be our bridesmaid. Well, because it's just business. Well, <laughs> And in three years, I get to sign the divorce papers and keep my green card. That's the plan. Oh, you are the best husband to be a girl ever had. <laughs> Essentially, we've booked in more private patients than we have private beds for. How the hell did that happen? From what I can see, there seems to be two opposing admissions lists circulating. <sighs> Roll on the vote of incompetence from the DHB. Clearly, the Muppets we have working here cannot be trusted with anything as simple as opening an email attachment. Let's concentrate on a solution. I am going to kick whoever's butt is responsible for this. What? I, um, seem to have sent out two attachments. A draft to Meyer and a corrected draft to Gerald. So this whole thing's your fault? 
That's a simple enough mistake. One that we get to spend the next day fixing, on top of all the other unnecessary extra work created by the private side of the hospital. If you can't handle it, I'm sure there's somebody waiting in the wings that'll be only too happy to do so. Sorry. I didn't mean that. I know you've just returned from leave. So, what is the best way to deal with this? Simple. We bump some people off. No, no, no. That is why we're doing this. They pay so they don't have to wait. The single rooms in the surgical ward, we'll use them. Public beds, we need to keep them free for emergency cases from... Tough, I'm making a call. We'll use the single rooms for the private overflow. Just so you can save face Just with Just do it, Scotty. And tell the cleaning staff to dole up the rooms as much as they can. Flower arrangements and a TV at the very least. What about isolation rooms? What if there's an emergency in ED? There's no way we'll cope. It's a temporary measure. We'll just have to hope for the best. If there's an emergency, we'll deal with it somehow. We'll need extra staff cover. If the private patients I've seen already are anything to go by, they expect the VIP treatment. And guess what? No extra pay. She's got a point, Scotty. It's not ideal, I know. It'll be hard yards for all of us. But once things are up and running, it'll be back to normal. Until then, the only way to get through it is to get stuck in. I'll help in any way I can. Thank you, Maya. Personally, I'm willing to shelve the appointment I made for after work in order to redo the allocations. You don't have to do that. It's your party. You have to get ready. I'll still make it in time. Let's get back to it. I didn't know Libby was going to go public so soon. I... I didn't know Libby was going to go public so soon. I tried to tell you earlier, but you What are you sleep. thinking, Gerald? What part of your deluded brain recognises this as a good idea? I am eligible for American citizenship. If I marry Libby, she will be too. Well, that makes sense at least. Libby makes out like a bandit. What do you get? Libby's got all sorts of great contacts over there and she could land me a great job. Since I didn't get the EA job here, I figured I'd tap into a bigger market. Don't kid yourself, Gerald. Libby is out for number one and nothing else. She is a friend, Brooke. She needed a break and I was happy to help. If you needed a break, I would have done exactly the same thing. Besides, what is wrong with wanting to settle down? This is real to you, isn't it? Of course it is. You don't have sex, so your best friend is your ideal mate. You get to live together, you get to play house, you get stability. This is a mutually beneficial arrangement. I'm under no illusions about it being anything else. I'm sorry, but I think you are. This will mean far more to you than it ever will to Libby. You get everything that you ever wanted. She gets a solution until something better comes along. She's a user, and you're going to end up hurt. 